So here we are in Ableton, and before we look at what the most common uses for the utility device are, let's talk about the controls of the utility device. So here we have an input section, and we have an output section. So let's start with the input section. First of all, we can flip the polarity of the left and right channel independently. Now beneath those we have a channel selector and this lets you decide what the source is that you will be pulling from your stereo track. So you can either listen to the left side only, you can listen to the right side only, you can listen to stereo, and alternatively you have the option to swap the left and right channels respectively. So we'll just leave that at stereo for now. So next we have the width parameter here and this is kind of special because it doubles as a mid side knob. So if we change it to mid side you can see here that we can toggle to favor either the sides or the mids and that refers to a mono versus stereo image. So the mids are what you're going to be hearing on the mono channel and the side is kind of the stereo image of the source. And alternatively you can just solo all of the sides. So right now we're hearing only the side information or the stereo information minus the mono. So if we bring that slider back, now we'll be hearing all the mono minus the side. So let's go ahead and switch this back to the regular width mode. Now the width mode works similar to our mid side mode, however it is more focused on expanding our stereo image across the right and left channel. So you'll see as we turn this up on the master track, everything just becomes super wide. And if we were to use our next function here, mono, you'll see all that is lost because we're only expanding the stereo image of our source. Now we talked about the mono switch, we'll be coming back to this and how useful this actually is. Beneath the mono function, we have a similar function called base mono. And the base mono actually references this control right here as a pass over frequency. And whatever frequency you have set, all of the frequencies beneath that will be set to mono. So right now, I believe I have this, yes, I have this running on my 808 track right here. And if we solo this, we also have an audition button to hear the crossover frequency. So let's move on to our output section here. Another really useful function here is the gain knob. And this will just give you a little bit of gain or take a little bit off depending on what you need to do. Here, another useful tool, we have a pan knob. Basically, it will just pan the output to either the right or the left. Our next option here is the mute option, and this will just mute the output of the track. Next, we have a DC filter switch, which kind of filters out those inaudible frequencies that are really low. But DC offset is more related to the amplitude of your tracks. And if they're offset a little bit above the line of zero or below the line of zero, this can help remedy those issues that might occur. Usually this is due to mechanical errors, like if you are recording an analog synthesizer or if you're recording actual audio, your circuits may malfunction a bit and you'll get some DC offset. So what makes this utility plugin so useful? Now the first reason that I already alluded to is automation. Basically we can come to this utility plugin, automate the volume, the panning, and the mute options independently of the mixer. So I'll show you that I already have some automation on this guitar track. If we toggle over to the utility, you'll see I'm doing a bit of gain adjustments because my clips change. Now this type of automation is quite common. It's known as ride automation. And basically in the old days when they just had an analog mixer, the engineer would be on the actual fader riding it up and down to mix well with the other tracks. So this will really bring out special character in the parts that you want to emphasize and then can tuck them back into the mix. So that's referred to as ride automation. And if we take a look at our actual guitar track, you'll see here on the utility that this automation is locked up. So if I move this knob, our automation is gone and I can re-enable this with the re-enable automation button. However, 
I still have the option to move this track's fader up and down. So if I felt like the track was too loud overall compared to the other tracks, I can use the fader and I'll still have the volume automated rides. And the same thing goes for the pan knob. When we automate the mixer, we won't be able to pan the entire track. However, if we choose to automate the utility device, we still have access to the panning options that are on the mixer. Now, likewise, the mute button, if you ever want to automate a track to mute it, you can do so without actually automating the track itself. So if you ever just want to solo other tracks to maybe get a better mix down, you wouldn't have to override the automation that you already worked so hard to draw. The next helpful use of the utility device is for gain staging. Now, when you're going in to start a mix, maybe for a client or even for yourself, it is recommended that you export all the tracks from your production session and just start an entirely new section so that you can start from scratch and commit to some of the production decisions that you chose. Now the problem that comes with importing these tracks is that they're all at different levels, some quieter and some louder, and the ideal decibel level for audio is negative 18 decibels. So here we can come in and adjust our utility tracks looking at our mixer here and just resetting all of these and then going through track by track and using the utility device to either raise the signal or lower the signal until we're peaking at about negative 18, the sweet spot again for audio. Anytime we want to send that to an effects unit, it is kind of proven that negative 18 is just a really nice balance. And so if I wanted to adjust the faders, say to adjust relative volumes, my gain staging information would be lost because it would be in the faders. So I recommend gain staging from the utility plugin and just slapping it on all of your tracks. Now the next use we already took a look at and that is the bass mono function. I think that this bass mono function is super underutilized because it can be a lifesaver for phase cancellation. Now you're already in maybe the mastering or the mixing process going to be tightening up that bass into the center and this utility device just has it has it all thought out and it gives you a really good audition tool so that you can hear exactly the crossover frequencies that you are going to be sending to mono and being able to choose that just makes it super dynamic so that you can still keep a bit of stereo information on your bass while having those really low slow moving frequencies in mono. Now another reason why the utility device is so useful is actually the channel chooser here. Now if you work with any film mixing or film audio, you'll see that sometimes the left and right channels actually have different tracks on them. Now this saves you a whole bunch of time because you can simply select either to basically solo the left channel or solo the right channel without ever having to touch a pan knob. Now this isn't just great for movie audio because oftentimes I've received drum clips where maybe the mid information is stored in the right channel and the side information is stored in the left channel. So what you can do when you have a situation like that is just duplicate the track, set one to the left channel and the other to the right channel and then mix the two together to find your perfect balance. And again, when you set it to the right channel, it's sending the right channel to both the right and the left channels, if that makes sense. Now the last and most helpful application, in my opinion, of this utility device would be actually checking your tracks in mono. So we have to consider when we are mixing, mastering, whatever we're doing, that the people listening to our music won't necessarily have the same speakers or even headphones that we have. So it's very important that when we're mixing, we're not only considering the stereo version of our mix and that we're checking to see how that version translate if it were to be played back on a mono system. 
So you can see here, as I mono this Rhodes channel, I'm losing just a ton of information. And this will tell me that I need to go in and make some changes, such as maybe duplicating the channel, really saturating some parts of it, maybe making some cuts and emphasizing the mids in order to bring that out in the mono field. So now if we go ahead and add a utility device here, So it seems like it still needs a little bit of work, but as you can see, at least I'm not shooting in the dark. Now the master is probably the most important track to reference in mono because it will give you important information about any phase issues that you might have. So here I'll demonstrate a quick example of phase cancellation by duplicating this guitar track and we'll actually invert the left and right channels and then we'll play them together and you'll see no audio. You'll see that soloing them both at the same time means that no audio is coming out. And this is because these channels are fighting for space in the frequency spectrum. And when I inverted the left and right channels of one of them, they were just completely canceling each other out because as one's amplitude went above zero, the others went below zero in the exact same pattern. So this has been kind of the utility device in a nutshell and some helpful applications of how and why you should be using this on every track. Now I have my set set up so that whenever I load a new audio or MIDI track, the utility device is already there for me and I can just put my effects before it so that I can hear what these effects are doing. So in order to have a utility device always load onto your audio or MIDI tracks, you have to load up an audio track with that device, right click on the audio track and go to save as default audio track. Now every time you open a new audio track or load a sample into an audio track, it will be automatically loaded with the utility device already there. I highly recommend doing this and utilizing the utility device with all the different applications that I have shown you today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you learned something new.